Hello everyone, welcome to Recording Everything. This is the weird and wonderful segment where I take a crazier sound that I've made and we dissect it. So, let's get straight into it. This is our sound. Now, that is a strider. A strider is a mechanical beast from Horizon Zero Dawn. Basically a horse, a mechanical version of it, um, or robot version. Uh, well, you can see it there. There are things I want you to note about it, which I took into account when designing the sound. For example, I wanted um, parts of it, like the sounds that were coming out of it, to actually have a reason to be coming out of it, like it's a, a function that the, bo like the body of the mech does. Um, I didn't just want it to have like the horses, uh, is that a purr or a, it's a snort, the file I got it from is a snort. Um, I didn't just want it to have that and then phase it, for example, because I was, I was trying stuff like that at the start and don't get me wrong, I think it's a great idea to mix it in. It gives the listener like that familiarity of what they're listening to is the horse, but it's obviously this massive twist with what I've done. Um, so if I turn that up, it's extremely low in the mix now because I, I wanted more of the mechanical sounds, which I'll get onto later. They are the much cooler part of the sound, because this here, if I even take off all the effects, so you can just hear it by itself. It's an okay sample. It's a great sample, actually. And you can find it on Freesound here. I will obviously not be monetizing this video, because I'm using a copyrighted sound and I respect him especially when he's got a recording like this so check it out show him some love that's where you can download it from um, and other than that what I did was add a flanger a pitch shift and what am I doing with the EQ oh it's just okay just bringing out some of the frequencies that the flanges enhancing, I think. Well, not enhancing, bringing out. Because you've got that. Yeah, it's creating a phase, like, shifty kind of thing. Which is making it sound more digital. And that's cool. I think it's fine. I just thought it was, like, just stupid that the mechanical horse would have a voice box in it imitating a, an actual horse but just in a more digital way. Um, kind of seemed like a cop-out to me. And also, like, these creatures, from what I understand, playing through Horizon Zero Dawn, is that they were, like... I, I don't know if it was a mistake completely, how they were made, but um, when the... Re well, spoilers coming. When the world was being rebuilt, I'm guessing it's like a, oh fuck, what do you call it? Like wires crossed between the mechanical things that they had and wildlife. Um, the machine that was building everything maybe got confused and built it out of machines. And this is what they built, say. So I wanted everything to have a function. Um... The, like, the pitch in this sound obviously also helps that digital kind of thing because you don't have, in the real world, you rarely get a sound that is that smoothly pitch shifted up and down. Um, 
But other than that, that was just more there for coherency's sake with other parts of the sound, to be honest. So let's move on from there. Um, so yeah, having functions for each of the sounds that I wanted, we have, when I was looking at it and looking at it in game, we have a canister at the back, which in game is flammable. But I mean, that doesn't mean it's not corrosive. And you'd think with like the green parts, because this thing eats. From what I remember, I see it. Yeah, no, it does. You you see it in the grass, like leaning down. Is that a picture of it there? Actually, no, no, it isn't. But you see it leaning down um, and eating so there we've got there's got to be some form of digestion for the animal to get um, energy there's got to be some mechanism in the head that helps it like cut the grass or whatever it's eating um, oh and the other thing, like, I thought of other than, well, no, there's two or three that I'm thinking of now. So just mechanical joints and that, there's a lot of those um, to which I could use to my advantage. I wasn't, I didn't do it as much here, but um, the creature's gonna overheat if it doesn't expel any of that heat from it um and how would it do that like i was thinking the same way a computer or any other mechanical device does like a fan some way like a radiator some way of giving off the heat there's a word for it and i just can't fucking remember god damn but onto that Shit, I just opened Steam. Cancel. On to that. Err, uh, where's Rupa? There. That is why this, the first thing you hear is that, the air release. Because I want, I imagined this sound occurring, say, the horse is running, the strider is running, my apologies, and it stops takes a break and it has to release some of that hot air so it doesn't overheat um so yeah i was thinking more like a steam engine i don't know if that's i don't think that's why a steam engine releases hot air but correct me if i'm wrong it just sounds cooler like that so maybe i was thinking a bit steampunky god this hay fever's getting to me and yeah i i kind of worked with what i had in terms of uh deodorant cans <laughs> um and also a lot of a bit of reverb to be honest with you when i say a bit like the tail is pretty long but I don't think you necessarily notice that it's got reverb on it. If you all do, please tell me, because... Like, I, I know there's some on there, but I don't think it's, like, directly noticeable that I'm using a hall reverb um, on this. It doesn't sound like it's in a hall to me. I might change my mind about that in the future, but yeah, maybe I'm slightly self-conscious about that now because it says something different to what I'm thinking I'm hearing. But anyway, it made it much smoother using that reverb because without it, I just had a... I, I guess it's still fine, actually, but it just felt a little bit airier and nicer. Um probably a good idea to make it more mono though if I was going to implement it. On to the coolest parts of this sound though are these mechanical all of that like, flickery 
Oh, fuck. That's why it's also not so prominent right now. One second. Let me rewind. Fuck. How far is it going to go? Is it going any further? Shit. There we go. Okay. There you go. Now you can actually hear it properly. Which is why I had that so low as well. Because it sounded more... Well, too much like the an, a real horse. So, here we have... Basically, creeks are going to be your best friend here. And the kind of creeks I'm talking about are the ones that have really prominent, like, attack hits. Um, as you can see there. Let me take one of these and, and actually... Like, is that no? That isn't completely normal. Uh, so these have these ones have already been processed. I think I'm gonna find an example for you, just so that just so we don't like get confused at all. Basically, what I've done though is taken a creek um, sound from whatever, like a, a door or that. In this case, it, I used a metal object. Here it is. Because I wanted that more metallic aspect. Uh, yeah, so like that, exactly like that. I haven't even done anything to that, and you can already hear where what I've got is coming from. Um, but yeah, what you're going to want to do with it is time stretch it, play around, really. Uh, just mess about with it, time stretch it, change the pitch. Um, uh, what else? Can add? Oh, adding a flanger as well will be like don't use that as like your be all and end all i would say playing with your the pitch and changing the rate is going to be the biggest part of the sound but adding the flanger at the end or a chorus something can bring out like the pitches and bass shifting kind of stuff and also you can use it like to add a bit of texture to each um, each of these separate hits here where my mouse is um, yeah what what I normally do if I bring up a flanger because these these have already been processed like it so I didn't really think about that before getting this up but what I would do with it is have the length low and then just change the rate around to see where um, I can add a, well, it can add a different texture to sound that I would like. You can get some pretty squelchy sounds from it as well if you use it this way. Um, that effect obviously doesn't work with longer tones, which is why on the horse... It sounds just more phasey. Oh, yeah, but you know what I mean. It's it's just more phasey. Um, and what what is actually so great about things like these creeks, though, is they are they feel somewhat more uh, human. When I say human, I mean. They don't sound as like digitally made because of the pitch fluctuations and that that occurring in them. There's just enough variation there for our ears to think that the thing is maybe living. Um, and fucking 
Let me find some else. The, so the pitch, what I was going to get onto there, but I just forgot mid-sentence, was the pitch, like, change in them. I used, like, as a... It kind of sounds like the horse is, like, going down, um, releasing air. Uh, it's tired, it's out of energy, uh, which is why... I've also imitated that with the uh, snorting horse sound effect. So it goes up and goes down. <laughs> I don't know why I just imitated that for you. But uh, the other mechanical sounds I had to it are... Where are they? Where are they is the question. Oh, they're here. Okay. Oh yeah, okay. So. Um, a big part of the sound is also to do with me taking the initial, like, uh, crocodile clips and, and horse snorts, uh, and just warping them and shaping them in different ways with like choruses, not heavy chorus effects. If anyone's ever used Studio D, you'll know it is not nothing like too overpowered. Um, it's it's easily like hideable, I guess. Uh, it doesn't bring out too much of that like phase shifting, but I guess you could try that. I've just mixed a lot of those in. I've created even more phase shifting, I think at points with me doubling stuff up and displacing it, um, which also adds more texture to the attack, like, bits of the sound, the clicks. Um, and then, finally, a, another, like, mechanical-type sound that I've got in it is a fan. Let me find it. Yeah, there. Okay. So, and that's got the same... Um, pitch fluctuation, I found a part of it. It is best, I will say, if you find a sample of what you're doing, or you try, when you're recording, like I did, to imitate that pitch um, fluctuation, so that when you line them up, they don't have to be exact, but as long as there's, like, the pitch and the volume are increasing and decreasing at around the same kind of times it sounds coherent um especially as it's a creature you've got a bit of lenience there i think uh well and i, I don't think especially when you limit it um and just <laughs> crush the fuck out of the sound it's gonna get more coherent anyway so yeah, it just helps to glue it all together, but there are other methods to do that too. Um, so this sound is just, it's just made by me using a, let me find it actually. God fucking damn, I need to tidy up. It's just me using this, which is a... It's for a laptop. Basically, you put it onto the laptop to cool it down. It's the same kind of thing. Spun it, and I put, like, a card on it. Oh, fuck, I'm going to give away my bank details on that. Let's put away some accounts. <laughs> like, say, a post-it note. Fuck. <laughs> Work. Okay, I'll, I'll use a card, but I'll hide. Oh, wait. Is that anything... Fuck it, I don't care. So, that obviously doesn't sound great because the material I'm using isn't, isn't as nice, but if I fucking, because what I've used is plastic. That sound there is more of the plastic sound, and I use that because it had more prominent attack hits. Um, what's this, a HMV card? Cool, I'll use that. Up down, so it's just plastic on that. 
I'm not doing it very well right now, but especially if you let let your thumb go loose by fucking show you. Let your thumb go loose. Just let it sit between your thumb and your forefinger. You can get some more sounds. Obviously in that in that sample as well. I got it at more of a constant rate and I was allowed to do that because I wasn't on camera and I wasn't like pushed for time. So uh, adding that in even more like variation in texture. Um, you don't prominently notice like that. That clearly sounds like someone is putting something to a fan, but when it's in context, with everything mashed together, just adds a bit more texture. Uh, up here, I think, yeah, that's just a a sample of that and the crocodile clips that's been warped and put together. If we put the, yeah, just some other variations again. Like that one's, this one is even more phasey than the stuff we have. And that's got even more attack, does it? Oh no, it's from that top one. Okay. What is this one? I don't, I honestly don't think that's adding too much. Maybe I just put it in because it had a bit of saturation on and it was helping glue stuff together. But um, now, now we're here, it's not an integral part of the sound so I've shown you every like the most important parts the the end of the sound like just gluing it together with stuff like saturation maybe a bit of reverb compression and limiting I've only used um, saturation and a limiter on this but I'm pretty sure this uh, this saturation is compressing it as well so um, it's adding character to each part, which is like all of the same now. So, um, yeah, try it. Uh, tell me what you think. This sound will be on SoundCloud. It will be a purple picture. I'm going to do all of these wooden wonderful ones as a purple, like, picture of the thing. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching, guys.